Thanks for joining me today as we continue to explore what it means to live a joyful life. The Bible says something very interesting in James 1, 2-4 in the message paraphrase. It says, Consider it a sheer gift, friends, when tests and challenges come at you from all sides. You know that under pressure, your faith life is forced into the open and shows its true colors. So don't try to get out of anything prematurely. Let it do its work so that you become mature and well-developed, not deficient in any way. This passage says that in tough times, our faith life is forced into the open and shows its true colors. You see, I guess it doesn't really matter what I say I believe about God or what I say I believe about living a life of faith and joy, because what I really believe will be obvious to everyone, especially to me, when bad stuff happens. And it can be shocking to realize that your faith isn't as strong or as deep as you thought it was. You know, when the bottom falls out, there's no hiding or pretending. When somebody you love dies, when somebody that you love is sick, maybe you get the news that you've got cancer, when one of your kids decides to go in a completely different direction, somebody says, I don't love you anymore, mental illness destroys a relationship, somebody goes to prison, I mean, you can't hide, and it doesn't really matter what you say. It doesn't even matter what you say you believe in those moments. What matters is what you do. So what do we do in those moments? James 1 says to consider it a sheer gift when tests and challenge come at you from all sides. Another version says, count it all joy, my brothers and sisters. I have to be honest and tell you, rarely is that my first reaction. I mean, I can probably count on one hand the number of times I've been successful initially at considering hard times a gift or counted it all joy. No, I'm just like you. My first reaction is usually anger or despair or bitterness, not joy. I'm not thanking God for this gift. And when I see that kind of a reaction in myself, I get disappointed in how far I still have to go to be a mature woman of God. But that's exactly the point James is making. We hate the process that makes us like Christ because it involves pain and sorrow and stress and upheaval. But we all want the product, spiritual maturity. And James says not to try and wriggle out of the hard times too soon. Because if we do, we will short circuit the process and remain immature little babies. I don't want to be a spiritual or emotional baby. Do you? I mean, of course not. Although. There are some times when I've said something like, God, I'm okay with staying a spiritual baby because growing hurts. But in my heart of hearts, that's not what I want. I want my faith life to be sturdy and strong, mature and well-developed. I'm willing to let trials and troubles expose my faith life so I'll know to stay on the path until I'm finished. I want my true colors to show. I'll see you tomorrow.